Evolved into one of the most toxic, chaotic, and unpredictable phenomena in the media landscape. Cause while Adam's influence has helped propel rappers to the next stage of their career, it doesn't make up for the times that he downright disrespected those who work for him, rappers, or fellow media personalities. Adam has ruffled up feathers so much that it even resulted into him getting cancelled, turned into a meme, or literally got him physically attacked. Which was the case when he started beef with a rapper who goes by the name of Russ. I will turn around and boop! Oh. Got punched in the goddamn head. Although he's built a name for himself as being one of the most successful independent rappers the hip hop genre has ever seen flourish, Russ would constantly be at the center of Adam 22's jokes on social media. I gotta admit it, today I'm doing an interview with Russ and Lil Dicky. <laughs> to understand why, it's important to note that Russ's brand revolves around spreading positivity and motivating up and coming artists. However, similar to how Logic, Chance the Rapper, or Kyle were perceived by a vast majority of the hip hop audience, Russ would be labeled corny for being a bit too positive. And his beef with Adam 22 showed just how much it really got to him. Hey, a big up Asada Z's. I was just on NJ's subreddit. Lena was in touch and Kegos with Jason. Yeah, don't believe all that shit, man. It's another, it's another, it's another, it's another timeline. It's another, um, it's another fucking, uh, it's another fucking bit. Whatever. It's whatever. I, 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 I don't care. I stop caring about those guys. I, I don't give a fuck. Jason love her, him, whatever. He's got a new side piece. I don't care. Fuck them. It all started in October of 2017, after Adam22 asked his fans if they would rather let their kids listen to Russ or Lil Xan, where Russ would end up losing by a wide margin. To add salt to the wound, he would then joke about the then 25-year-old rapper for his anti-drug t-shirt that read, How much Xans and Lean do you have to do before you realize you're a fuck loser? And I seriously can't believe I'm saying this, but Adam22 had a problem with Russ not wanting to do drugs. Exactly. You see, Adam22 exactly, is known yeah. to have done many of these substances throughout his life, <laughs> and has also co-signed time. Imagine hating somebody because they're not a degenerate. Imagine hating somebody because they're not a degenerate. I love it. Tons of rappers like Lil Pump, Lil Xan, and Smoke Perp, who were all well-known users at one point in time. Feeling as if they were being sneaked this by Russ, Lil Pump and Smoke Perp embarked on a journey to show how much they hated him. Tweeting things like, shut the f up you bitch. And me and J. Cole cool now, so now it's Russ. Adam22 didn't hesitate to join in on the fun with a few tweets of his own. In one case, he literally changed the text on the shirt to say, how much Zans and Lean do you have? And literally posted it on the official No Jumper account. And after enduring relentless online attacks, Russ and his crew reached a breaking point. Good. They didn't just go after Smoke Perp, who had posted photos of Russ's sister on. Russ is really, Russ is really about that life. He doesn't look like it, but Russ has got them goons. Russ has those African goons, bro. Don't fuck with Russ. Online, but they also targeted Adam 22. And it wasn't long before Adam claimed that he got jumped at a nail salon by Russ's <laughs> goons for what he said. All of a sudden, I just hear Adam 22. I'm thinking of somebody wanted a photo, so I'm like, oh God, can't I just get my nails done? I will turn around and boop. Oh, Shame. Got punched in the goddamn head. Uh, didn't see the guy that well, but punched me in the head one time, and then I believe I got hit again, sort of on the top of the head. Good. Although Russ was able to squash his beef with Smoke Perp eventually, it wasn't the same for Adam. Exactly. Instead, he claimed he got what he deserved. Exactly. We're talking real simple shit. People talk shit and then got punches thrown at them. Big deal, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like we're running around out here getting people killed and shit. Like, bro, you talked extensive shit on a consistent basis about someone you had never met in your life or talked to. And as a result, they responded and ended up punches got thrown your way. Big deal. Like, if you like. W, I, w, 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 Russ. W, Russ. And I would go as far as saying, I think. Adam needs that to happen to him on a continual basis. He's the type of person who probably does need to get legitimate, like not even like that rushed, like actually beaten up by somebody one-to-one. -one. Like where you just get beaten up, like that person just like dominates you and just beats you up continuously to a point where you have to like be like, no more, no more. Like that's what he needs. The way he talks about people, the way he talks in general, the things he says, you could tell he's the kind of person that's got away with saying a lot of shit and being able to kind of just get away with it, money, status, whatever, all that shit, living somewhere else in the hills, 
But that was necessary. I'm so glad Russ's goons did that. But he needs to have happened a lot. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I don't understand. Like, when you push and shove someone consistently for a year, if you don't think that there's going to be some sort of a response, exactly. then I'm really confused on, on how you think this world operates. No, but that's the thing, though, to be fair. I think nowadays, look at somebody like Poetic Flacco, look at even academics to a certain extent. I think nowadays, these new content creators, these new hip-hop guys, or just in general, the new mindset now, is that they want to get, which is a strange place to be in. These commentators now like to get involved in beef. Before they'd be reporting on beef, but now the new evolution is like inserting yourself into the beef and becoming part of the narrative, being, come, being part of the storyline. But then they don't like it when it gets physical, when it goes beyond the internet. That's when they start to be like, oh, it's just jokes. I'm just trolling. I'm just trolling. It's like, no, some people don't like to troll. Some people don't like jokes. Some people have a limit as to how much they can do back and forth. So you have to be careful and wary of that. But you also have to expect, like Russ says, if you chat shit about people, they might want to respond physically. But this new generation of people and how they speak, they don't think there should ever be a physical consequence to what you say. In their world, it's content over everything. So in their world, in Adam 22's world, he would much prefer it for you guys to like go back and forth until the end of time because the back and forth creates more content. And when you create more content, you create more money, more views, blah, blah, blah. That's what they want. They don't want it to go like back and forth, then it's a fight, then it's kind of over. No, they want to continue back and forth. Continue back and forth. And some guys, some men in particular, are just not built like that. Some men just don't do the whole like yapping thing. Some men is like, okay, you said some shit about me. When I see you, it's on site. And unfortunately for Adam22, it was on site at a fucking nail salon. Hilarious. Getting your ass beat in a nail salon surrounded by Vietnamese women is fucking brilliant. I love it. Later, Russ took to Twitter and pointed out how grown-ass 40-year-olds who talk shit should face repercussions for their actions. Exactly. I agree. However, the whole thing would backfire on Russ. As social media began to point out how he came out looking like a man who couldn't fight his own battles. And some claim that he wouldn't have that same energy that he had for Adam had it been someone more street like- Nah, it doesn't matter though. I hate when people do this stuff. I hate, I hate when people move the goalposts. It doesn't matter. I dealt with that person in that situation that way. You can't then then start referencing other things I didn't do. No. It happened when it happened at that point. Don't reference other shit. Yo, big up Uche. Um, about 2018. 27 2015 2018 so that kind of period when little pump smoke perp little zan all those guys are popping up on no jumper as well 2015 2018 Chief Keith. People already don't like him. Now he's outright bragging about getting people jumped. I give him six months before something bad happens to him. Adam22, on the other hand, came out looking like the victor in this situation and basically apologized for everything he said to Russ after the incident. I know for a fact that he has had other people sent after other people. I know, yeah. I'm over. I just want to say for now that uh, me and Russ have squashed things. <laughs> of course you squashed things because his goons beat you up in a nail salon. Me and Russ have squashed things. Of course you have. Of course. Fucking hell, man. What an idiot. What an idiot. What an idiot. If anything, Lil Zan has more of a problem with Russ, probably. Smoke. All those guys, they're rappers. You know, whatever. Cool. But he just inserted himself in there. Got his likes and views. Cool. But then he paid the price. It is what it is. Much love to Russ. Uh, I plan on listening to his music some Big up all righty. Yeah, but this violence should just be limited to the gangster rap world. Bapa shouldn't put hands on... Nah, I don't agree. I don't agree. The internet is the wild, wild west. Sometimes you say something about somebody, they might see you on a punch you in the face. That's the nature of the beast. If you don't want people to punch you in the face, don't say things about people on the internet. Simple as that, really. It's not, it's not fair. It's not good. It's not right. It's not just, but it is what it is. And I like to operate on the world as is, as opposed to how I want it to be. And some of these people, especially Adam22, you act as like an agent provocateur. You act as like a shock jock. You say things to get under people's skin. You want to be Vlad. But look at Vlad. Vlad moves carefully. Vlad, Vlad would never be caught slipping in a nail salon. He did, he did get caught slipping by Rick Ross Goons. But Adam22 wants to be like Vlad, but he doesn't do what Vlad does. He moves bare reckless because he thinks he's untouchable or something. Because I think there's a part of... I bet you... There's a part of Adam 22's brain that thinks because he's the most important 
most famous, most visible West Coast hip hop platform, I bet you there's a part of him that thinks no one's going to touch me because they need me. Because no jumper goes, the West Coast implodes. I bet you he thinks that. I bet you he thinks that. But that's not true. So if you test somebody's gangster, if you push people, if you keep prodding, if you keep throwing stones and hiding your hands, if you keep asking reckless questions, you never know. So be careful what you wish for. Yo, big up Gamebred Footballer. Yeah, take care, brother. Have a good one. Someday I'm going to give it a try. He then said that he was just trolling at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, it's like, I'm a troll and I'm funny. And no, like, no, no. what? You're just making more shit for me to make content out of. It's just more shit for me to talk about. Adam22 even admitted that a lot of the drama started because he was on the same drug that Russ was preaching against. Russ brought it up to me <laughs> that there was. <laughs> he's blaming Zach. He's, he's such a pussy that he can't even stand on the fact that what he said. He's now blaming Xanax for the reason why he said that. Come on, bro. Just stand on what you said. You got punched in the face. It happens. Dust yourself off. Keep it moving. Don't now blame the drugs. Oh, I was high. That's why I said that fucks up shit to you. Come on. There was a lot of tweets that I didn't remember, probably because I was zanned the fuck out, just oh. like his t-shirt said, where I was basically Ooh. like really roasting this motherfucker. And I don't do that now. Like, I'm, I'm not going to just use like a rapper as a punchline, like in the way that I was doing there, where I was really like treating him like he wasn't a human being, you know, which to me, I don't I don't approve of that or condone that. While Russ might have gotten embarrassed for not fighting his own fights, it certainly wasn't as bad as China Mac who got exposed after going too close to the fire. I think you being the biggest in the world got your head and your ego all the way up there. You think you're like this big hot shot guy, but in actuality, you just like the laughing stock for the world. In late 2023, No Jumper fan favorite and friend of Adam22, Crip Mac, would be arrested once again on gun charges. Oh yeah. Leading to some this was this was disgusting. This was disgusting. A bit this was disgusting. Crip Mac was all over no jumper at one point. Adam 22 was absolutely rinsing him. Rinsing Crip Mac on, on no jumper. The Crip Mac runs into some trouble. Don't get me wrong, Crip Mac did the wrong thing. He's the one that got himself in trouble. But then I think Crip Mac needed like a testimony from people that knew, that knew him to give to the judge to, to maybe help with his like bond or his bail. Don't get me wrong. Maybe it wouldn't have made a, ch a difference, but he requested Adam 22 to like write something or be present to be a witness for him and to give him a good fucking, you know, recommendation to the judge. And he refused. What a piece of shit. What a piece of shit. We're not saying it would have helped, but still the gesture would have been nice after all the times of rinsing him. What a piece of shit. Friction between Adam22 and Crip Mac's manager, China Mac, who was upset that Adam wasn't willing to come stand in court to help with Crip Mac's case. Because I knew that the judge would tell the lawyer uh, to put in a motion, I wanted to, before we even put in a motion, to have people of the community to represent Crip Mac in the courtroom to show that Crip Mac isn't a criminal that's running the streets doing criminal shit. That he's actually has a job, that he's actually doing community work, and that he's handling cisness, as he would say, right? So, first person I asked was who? Adam 22. I hit Adam 22 up. I'm like, yo, Adam, fucking, um, Crip Mac got court. It's very important. Um, can you guys come to court and say that, you know, he's employed with you guys and that, you know, if he was to be given bond, y'all would pose some type of responsibility for him. Make sure that, you know, he's going to work and that he's not messing up. So he said, oh, I'm booked. I have a, a interview that day. Crip Mac could be coming. I have an interview that day. Fuck off, Adam22, man. He's such a piece of shit. But to be fair to Adam22, to give Adam22 his justice, his just does, his just deserves, his just deeds, da 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 da. Much like other people on the internet who are pieces of shit, he is very consistent in his piece of shit behavior. But people can't get enough of him. He's very consistently an asshole. But people keep going back into him, back to him, back to him, back to him. I don't understand why. I don't get it personally. The guy doesn't seem like a nice guy. He doesn't seem like a like a good friend to have even. 
He doesn't seem like a good boss to work with, a good boss to work for, a person to work with. He seems like somebody that's always likely to stab you in the back, take you advantage of you, and just treat you like shit, talk behind your back. But people still go to him. Is it the money, the clout, the fact like really? Come on, man. I'm home, he could be home for the holidays because you, you know, go up there and say he has a job. I've seen it happen. I've seen lawyers, I mean, judges let people go because, you know, their employers came into the courtroom and said, you know, he's employed and whatever, whatever, whatever. So I seen that happen, so I knew there was a possibility. So that's why I even asked Adam. I really mm. didn't want to ask Adam for nothing, honestly. This is for somebody's freedom. This is for somebody that you call your friend, your buddy, buddy, your, you know, whatever the f he calls him, you know what I'm saying? However, Adam22 didn't take too kindly to being called a bad friend and started firing back with videos of his own. Uh, I seen China Mac talking shit, running his mouth. Let me explain something to you. I got 20 full-time employees. And when I have a day of four full-length interviews, that shit's important to me. That shit impacts the bottom line. And uh, I'm not really feeling sitting here and taking business advice from some guy who can't even manage his own career. Never mind Crip Max. I mean, you were trying to be his manager. He got this case. He caught all these gun charges under your watch. So that's on you. And then this dude who's never been successful at anything in his entire life is trying to tell me how to run my business. Bro, if you wanted me at the bail hearing, you should have told me more than 24 hours in advance and I would have made it happen. In fact, I was just talking to Lupe and we <laughs> You see how much of a cunt he is. If you wanted me at the bail hearing, you should have told me 24 hours in advance. <laughs> you can't depend on him as a friend. You have to, you have to tell him 24 hours. You have to like submit a request <laughs> for Adam 22's attention 24 hours in advance to his assistant that then passed it on to another. Like, fuck off, man. Come on, bro. Do Crip Mac a favor. Now, again, no one's saying what Adam 22 would have said in that courtroom would have got Crip Mac out on bail. No one's saying that. Most likely it wouldn't. Given Crip Mac's rap sheet, given his criminal record, probably not likely he was going to get out on bail anyway. But it would have helped. It would have helped. It would have maybe helped. You never know. But the fact that he just refused to do it. Oh, I've got interviews to do. Cancel your interviews, man. Reschedule them. Some guy that you were fleecing and using on no jumper, continuously putting him in every fucking video and fucking rinsing him fucking dry is now needing some help. Come on, man. I'm too busy with interviews. Tell me 24 hours in advance. Oh. Yeah, it, brother, Johnny. Yes, he does have a business to run. But if you have a business to run, you still have friends and family, right? And sometimes in emergencies, you make exceptions for friends and family. He could have easily said, hey, this is the first and last time I do this. It's an exception, but I'm here for you. It's possible. You could always give one person an exception. Doesn't even give them an exception because he doesn't want to do it. We are going to make it happen because she actually gave me some good notice. But meanwhile, you are just out here in no man's land because everything that you ever tried to do streaming wise has absolutely failed. And now Crip Mag's gone, so you can't glaze him any further since that was the only thing giving you any kind of relevance. This is why China Mag doesn't understand me. It's because his schedule is open today, tomorrow, the day after that, and every day for the rest of time. And I'm we're, not. We're calling you a bad friend. He's calling you a bad friend and you're just basically saying that he's broke and he doesn't have, he's not busy like you. They're saying you're a bad friend because you're using your business as an excuse not to be there for your friend. What's this guy on, man? Oh. Not joking. This is a grown ass man with no responsibilities, no business, no employees, no dependents, nothing. He got nothing going on. So how the f gonna sit there and talk about a grown-ass multi-millionaire with 20 people on the payroll when you got nothing going on and China Mac I don't even want to get into this because people that I don't want to offend are gonna get hurt in the process but tell them why you ain't been on Vlad in a few years the incident that Adam 22 is referring to is the DJ Vlad interview with China Mac two years ago where China Mac narrated his entire fight with former no jumper host AD 
I had balanced myself because I hit the wall. I kind of like was about to fall, but the wall held me up. And then I got back up. And when I got back up, he tried to rush me. So when he rushed me, I sidestepped. You know what I'm saying? Like I sidestepped and I just kind of pushed him this way. And he fell on the floor. So when he fell on the floor, at that moment, his head was like right there. So I went over there to try to kick it. The only problem with this was that the fight was completely staged and it never really happened. Apparently, China Mac was just trying to appear tough on camera. Interestingly, what really made Vlad blacklist China Mac from his channel was the time he pranked him with a life-threatening situation. Hey, I'm all loud, bro. Oh, Yo, 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 hey, yo, Vlad. <laughs> Vlad with a blicky. You've been pranked. <laughs> You've been pranked, Vlad! Vlad wasn't too happy. Bro, That's act so like his interviews depend on his presence. He might be exactly. one of the corniest exactly. interview exactly. out of exactly. all his employees. Exactly, exactly. He's the worst, man. He's the worst friend. Worst friend, worst leader. There's more bad examples coming up. When he gets to the house phone thing, that house phone thing was too much. The house phone situation was just... That's when everybody should just blacklist him. That happens. He's gonna come there, but yeah, big up Assad Aziz. Big up Vlad too, by the way. I think Vlad doesn't doesn't like China Mac anymore after this. Such a such an unnecessary prank. This isn't funny. Vlad even cut China Mac off after this as well. Happy with China Mac after this and banned him from appearing in his interviews, as things could have gone very differently in that situation. However, China Mac would respond to Adam. Admitting that he might have chased clout, but Adam does the same thing, only worse. But now that you said you're gonna go to Crip Max court hearing, that's really all that matters to me, you feel me? Um, because I do care about the brother, you know what I'm saying? I do want him to get home, so I know that, you know, Adam 22 and No Jumper, y'all could, you know, really help bro come home. So that's all I'm really worried about. I don't want to go back and forth with Adam 22. I'm really not interested in that, you know what I'm saying? He called me a clout chaser, you know what I mean? But I'm like, okay. I mean, I've done some clouctivities. Don't get me twisted. I've done some clouctivities. You know what I'm saying? But me on the internet, who hasn't? But if I'm chasing clout, then Adam22, what the f are you doing? And also, not to mention, you let another man f your wife, bro. Like, if I'm not gonna lie, I used to like China Mac before, but the internet ruined China Mac too. He's so cringe now. He's so cringe now. I don't watch any of his content anymore at all, zero. But when I did used to see him pop up on my timeline, I'll check out some of his stuff. But now he's unwatchable, man. He's unwatchable. When gang, when quote unquote gangsters get on the internet and they start doing the clout chasing thing, it might be one of the worst things ever to witness. When you see actual like quote unquote goons doing that, you're like, it's hard to watch, man. It's hard to watch, hard to watch. If that's not chasing it, then what is- This brings us to our next victim, Jason Love. The star who slept with Adam's wife only a few days after their wedding and went on a press run clowning Adam shortly after. Do you think that you fucked her better than Adam did? Well, obviously, yes. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he probably felt different with Adam for her because love is involved emotions. But as for the physical aspect of getting, obviously. Adam 22 and his wife, Lena the Plug, have been heavily involved in the industry for the past couple of years but while adam has had the chance to sleep with plenty of different types of women in their content lena has never shot a scene with anyone besides adam which is why it went insanely viral when he announced that a scene would be coming out with her and another guy well one thing that's for sure is that it went viral but it wasn't a good look for adam 22 because shortly after the scene aired he was getting cooked by all sorts of people on the internet you seriously couldn't scroll Twitter, YouTube, or TikTok without seeing a joke with Adam22 as the punchline during this time. But strangely, nothing seemed to affect him. He was joining in on the jokes and making light of the entire situation since he was still making ridiculous bags from it. But when Jason Love went on a press run, breaking down how he annihilated Adam's wife during filming, Adam couldn't hold his tongue anymore, prompting a response that everyone thought should have stayed in the drafts. Hey, Jason Love, I trusted you. 
to pork my life. And it seems like that cloud is getting to your head. I'm talking real, real spicy, and I ain't really feeling it. Don't make me expose you. Ow. Yuck, man. He's so corny. Ugh, man. Imagine being like this. Ah, Fuck. And you know what I'm talking about. It can get real, real messy out here. Number four. You don't want problems moving around in these LA streets. Because I can make that happen. I'm very, very well connected. And number five. You are officially blacklisted from smashing my wife again. Show some respect. While things might have seemed to flare up between them, it's important to remember that they were both making ludicrous amounts of money from the video and they were never even friends. It was just business. Unlike Lil House Phone, who got outed by Adam and got embarrassed when he tried to stand up for himself. Lil House Phone had been Adam 22's closest friend for about seven this is the worst one. This to me is the worst one. This should have been the one that everybody saw at No Jump and thought, okay, if Adam can do house phone dirty, we're all susceptible. We are all, all of us are exposed. Because the way Adam 22 did house phone, this is the type of stuff that will get a nigga clapped. And I don't mean hallelujah. This is the type of stuff that legitimately would be, it's on site for you at all. This is the type of stuff that would make me be like, it's on site for you until the day that I die. Continuously. Every time I see you, I'm fucking you up. Every time I see you, I'm fucking you up. Every time I see you, I'm fucking you up. That's the type of thing that this is. But they didn't learn. No one, again, look at this, look at these series of events. They're not in chronological order. No, I think they're in chronological order. They are in chronological order. But there's evidence there that he fucks over everybody. So as much as I dislike Adam 22, I can't dislike him a lot because at least he's honest about who he is. He's an asshole. He's a cunt. He's a prick. He's a piece of shit, but he's very consistent. So if you keep being his friend and you keep working with him, at some point, I've got to blame you. It's like people that get scammed by NFTs. People who get scammed by NFTs and crypto coins and stuff from influencers and stuff. If you get scammed now, if you get rug pulled now, I can't blame Boogie. I have to blame you. If you're dumb enough to buy a faddy coin, you deserve to lose your money. So it's almost like Adam22. If you decide to be friends with Adam22 and he fucks you over, should I really be mad at him or I should be mad at you because you expose yourself to somebody who's consistently fucked over everybody in his life at one point or the other? Move cautiously when it comes to Adam22 because he's a piece of shit years but little did he know how hard adam would betray him when the transgender star gracie jane claimed she had personal information about him on adam 22's sledge lords podcast adam had hosted her on the show knowing she had something to do with house phone right from the beginning of the podcast it was pretty clear that she had malicious intentions exactly that's the thing people that's the thing people discount that's the th oh, i'm getting heated now exactly big up johnny sneed this is generational beef. Exactly, bro. This is the type of thing, as a real man, this type of thing that you will never let go. You will never let go. This type of thing that you're like, until the day that I die, maybe I'm going to pass on to my kids. We are beefing. We are beefing. If you remember correctly, if you know your No Jumper law, when you watched that interview, the original one, before it got edited, that transgender person was on smoke. She was on fire. She came to spill tea. She came to be messy. From the minute they started that pod, you knew she was about to expose somebody. So it was a bit like, so maybe Adam 22 didn't know about the history that she had the house phone. Maybe. I doubt it, but maybe. But when she came on, she was looking for a reason to just expose. Ah, suck his dick. You know, she had to say something. She was just waiting for a moment. Adam 22 should have known he should have let her say what she wanted, and then in post, he should have edited that bit out. That's what a real friend does. Let her say what she wants, cool, but then edit that bit out, if you want to put it out there. If it was me, I, would have, I wouldn't have published the interview. Don't publish it. But he did publish it. And oh my God. What would you describe the tone of this episode as being? <laughs> I mean, 
We're going to have fun today. I'm going to have a lot of fun today. A lot of fun today. <laughs> and by the time we get into the podcast, she's already name dropping house phone and Adam 22 only makes it worse. Never mind. I was going to impersonate someone and that I shouldn't have. Did I look down upon to expose that somebody may have been with a trans person? If... Um, yeah, absolutely. I sign NDAs and I take them very seriously. So just but letting everybody know You didn't know get that. one, from, I'm guessing? <laughs> you didn't me, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> the... I just air them out. But I feel like in general, that's kind of a thing. You pay for discretion in this world, okay? Uh -huh. mm. All right. I am a very, very honest person and I'm well known, but it... As the interview is about to end, Adam realizes that he might have taken it a little bit too far. I have a feeling that this will soon be about him. Oh, I'm going to be hearing a lot about this. Tell me you can take it up with me. I don't give a... I would like to say the same, but it seems like I'm worried about people calling me a bad friend for just... How can you be worried about people calling you a bad friend now and not when it happened? Maybe maybe this is part of his being a sociopath, right? Maybe that's part of it. But I think that's giving him too much credit. I just think he's a piece of shit, which is okay. But God almighty, bro. How do you suddenly have a fucking conscious crisis right at the end of the pod? Oh, actually, I think this was a bad idea. Really? Now you think it's a bad idea. Now, at the end of the pod. Not editing this and putting friend. it out. They're gonna be mad at me. After the interview, Adam hit up House Phone, who pleads with him to not upload the video, but knowing that Adam isn't gonna agree, he tells him to make sure the editors cut it out. However, the editors missed a lot of parts that mentioned House Phone when the video initially came out. They didn't miss it. Adam22 did not tell him to edit anything out. They didn't miss it. It was not a mistake. I don't agree. It was not a mistake. They didn't miss it. It was intentional. Adam has always been content over everything. Adam has always been. As long as it doesn't financially affect, you know, yeah. He, he's always been content over everything. Uh, big up Andrew Tain. House phone coming like a junkie. Yeah, obviously. How else do you think he ended up in that position? Standard shit, innit? Like, unfortunately for him, he's the drugs have... He's calmed down a bit, it seems like, because he's doing quite well with his business. Um, what are they called? That flying di the the dice sneakers he's got. He's doing well with those. But you could tell there's the only way he could end up in a position with a trans person you'd imagine is probably too much partying. And he's always you you know and he's always he's, he's got the classic signs of somebody that does too much drugs. He's super unreliable. He doesn't show up on time. Um, yeah, he's always wiping his head. He's always sweating when he's on a podcast. Like standard junkie shit, and he's always like patting his head and too sweaty like. Yeah, so it's only his, his own fault he ended up in that position. But as a friend, Adam should have never released that episode of that show. Never should have released it. Never, never. Which permanently altered Housephone's image to the public. Yep. When Housephone confronted him, he was quickly reminded of what kind of person Adam 22 was. But let's re rewrite this and let's say that they had properly edited everything out and there wasn't anything in that episode that suggested anything about you. I mean, they still would have put two and two together. No, because point. I told them to take out everything where there was any instance of of this person saying anything about anyone I knew. That was the intention. But, and, I, and if that had happened... But the, intent, I, the I, intention know, doesn't matter at, at a certain point, I don't I agree. And that's like, why I felt like shit about it. Is because, I don't give a and, fuck about you feeling like shit. I can't believe shit. that you you're keep, acting like you, you don't believe to, me. You keep trying to do this victim white boy thing where you're like, you're trying to make it about you. It's not about you, Adam. I understand that like, you have clearly suffered a lot more from bro, this. I this just also want you to understand that this is not. I don't give a fuck. It's not about you. It's not about you at all. I'm not trying to make you it about had, me. You had the power in your hand for it not to happen at all. You're talking about, yeah, he's been going through the mom shit. He's been going through the health shit. You're talking about the person that fucking raised me? That birthed me, my best friend that died. Oh, just he's been going through the mom shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's funny? You know what's funny about this though? You know what's funny about this? You know what's funny about this though? You know what's funny about this? You know what's funny about this? <laughs> House phone will probably end up on no jump at some point. That's a really funny and sad thing about this whole situation. House phone at some point will probably end up at no jumper. People just can't, like Adam 22 is like a, it's like a moth to a flame. They just can't resist. Even when he fucks them over, they just always end up going back. Look at fucking Lush. Adam said some fucking horrible things about Lush. 
He fired him publicly, embarrassed him, publicly fired him, treated him like a peon, like a peasant, took the piss out of him. And the first opportunity, he ran back. Do you, do you, are you actually acting like I have some kind of disrespect for your mom when You're I- Respectful as, I paid for the fucking first funeral of all, as soon as it all. happened, just because. No. By the way, house phone wasn't anything, by the way. That's very shameful, I'm not gonna lie. I like house phone, but he wasn't on anything. When somebody says on a microphone and suggests or intimates that they paid for your mom's funeral, when they didn't, by the way, he didn't, by the way. I didn't want to donate some money to the GoFundMe, but he didn't pay for the funeral. He acts like he paid for the fucking whole funeral. That's super disrespectful. If someone said that about your mom, you have to crash out. House phone wasn't really about to crash out. He, he, he stood up in stages. He wasn't really about to fight. He should have really fucked Adam 22 up. It happened just because... It wasn't good enough. He should have fucked him up. This is not even the worst part about this confrontation. It sucks more for a house phone because he was forced to sit back down and continued the podcast after acting out, <laughs> which didn't help his already... <laughs> He was forced. No, he wasn't forced. He could have left. That's what I'm telling you. There's so I need to figure it out. What is it about house phone? What is it about, sorry, Adam22? What is it about Adam? What special power does that guy have where people just can't seem to just be like, okay, fuck you for life? Why? Why is he still sitting there? <laughs> Adam 22 is, uh, there's something up. He's, he's a bad bitch for sure. He's a bad bitch, bro. He's a bad bitch, Adam 22. He's a bad bitch. Look at Lush. <laughs> Plummeting reputation. Some people speculate that this was all planned out by Adam 22 because he didn't like the fact that House Phone smashed his wife before him. But if you ask me, this is clearly another case of Adam being insensitive and scaring away his employees. Because after this, House Phone would leave No Jumper forever, setting the blueprint for AD and T-Rell, who followed suit after being mistreated by Adam. AD and T-Rell were street savvy guys who joined the No Jumper show, following his impressive performance. Best era. This was the best era of No Jumper after the whole Cam Girl House Phone era. This was the best era of No Jumper. And Adam again fucked it up, fucked it up because he got to, you know, in his feelings and couldn't really lead it as a proper man oh he put he couldn't lead as a proper leader that's the main thing about this he fucked up a good situation now to be fair to him these guys also are quite they're, they're like they're unmanageable in a way these guys are unmanageable they have a very big ego um i wouldn't say they're entitled but they're kind of entitled you know what i mean like they're very sensitive so i understand why he found it difficult to wrangle these guys but he should have figured out something whether it's bringing in an external person to act as like the channel manager network manager or something to act like maybe as a middle person because adam 22 clearly is not good with conflict he's not good with having honest conversations he's not good with being a leader he's not he's just not good communication skills are all over the place whatever so he probably should have brought somebody in to help but these guys also you know made it difficult for him because they already were getting you know, a lot of attention and they were thinking probably they were bigger than the platform. Maybe they planned it to go out. I don't know. But he should have made this work because these guys were the reason why No Jumper was booming at that time. And he really fucked it over by, you know, talking about their business to an employee, for fuck's sake. Come performances on. in various interviews. AD was this cool guy who had a great sense of humor and was adored by the audience. That was drunk as uh -huh. And I start crip walking and shit, and man, Big U recorded it. <laughs> Shout out to Unk. He put it on his Instagram, and they tore me a new one. Really? On oh, they fucked me over. Oh my it's, god. He's he's the main one, man. Spin moves and tornadoes and all type of shit. Right. So I had to live that for like two weeks, and since then I ain't <laughs> crip walking. They used to love each other, man. That was AD's best friend. Look how Adam was smiling. They used to love each other. They were actually friends, friends, and then it all imploded. And the cruel thing about it. They all left just before Adam 22 got married. So this all imploded just before Adam 22 got married. So that wedding was just attended by Leonard's friends. Because I don't think Adam has many friends. All these friends are people that he employs. So all these guys that he employs that he pissed off, they all, they all, they all didn't go. I love it. Um, 
My bad. What's it? My bad. What's it? Ad. Yeah, yeah. Ad's. Ad's. Uh, there. There's a picture on the on the no jumper subreddit. Where Where was Ad at? Where was he at? Where was he at? Where was he at? Ad was somewhere, and there's a picture of him full body. Yo, Ad is massive, bro. But it's not a. It's not a bad thing because he's clearly in a very happy relationship. So it makes sense why he's that fat. Like he's really like he's with his missus, he loves her, they're really good. But E D is huge. Huge now. Huge. T Rail, on the other hand, was very charismatic on the mic and always got people interested in what he was saying. Once we moved to the fifties, it got crazy. And that's when you felt like you needed to squad up or what? For the fifties, yeah. I mean for the fifties it just felt like uh, uh it was a family oriented neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? We didn't cross the tracks like we didn't go out the 50s. Their addition to the No Jumper platform brought new life into the brand at a time when their content was beginning to get stale. However, tensions would slowly rise years down the line when t Row and AD would start their own shows disconnected from No Jumper. They felt like they could get their own shows running on the side while still collecting checks from No Jumper. At first, this wasn't a huge problem for their boss, Adam22. As AD had become a close friend he could rely on, and they all still made substantial- Yeah, look how small AD, even there. AD's putting a lot of pounds in there. Um, what are you saying, yeah? Shark smiled, exactly. Um, Adam has a black girlfriend now and he turned on him first day now don't believe that shit again it's all it's all a it's all content and everything it's all a skit it's a bit none of that stuff is real bro they're doing it on purpose oh lena got spotted in turks and caicos with jason love why are people taking pictures who's it come on come on it's all it's all part of the game man it's not none of this stuff is none of this stuff is real just coincidentally she gets posted she gets spotted with jason love in turks and caicos and then suddenly adam has got a black girlfriend come on for contributions to the shows but as their platforms began blooming, Adam started to become more critical of AD and was even having reservations about keeping him on the show. He was doing like three streams a week, four streams a week outside of that show. And he was kind of like saving topics. Like he didn't want to, he wasn't, he wasn't giving him his full self. However, this wasn't the only reason Adam didn't want AD on the show anymore. You see, Adam had invited a man called Richard Spencer to the show, which a lot of the staff weren't too happy with for very obvious reasons. Richard Bernard Spencer is an American neo anti-Semitic conspiracy theorist and white Spencer has advocated for the enslavement of Haitians by whites and for the ethnic cleansing of the racial minorities of the United States, additionally expressing admiration for the political tactics of the American Party. Even though this person claims to be reformed, it's not hard to understand why a lot of No Jumper staff wouldn't want him on the show, especially since most of them are minorities. AD, in particular, decided to voice his opinions on the No Jumper Wednesday show. All this shit got shied past in the interview. I don't appreciate that Who shit. Interviewed Adam interviewed him. I'm a little disappointed, Adam, though, because, like, you know, you have a most. To be fair, to be fair, this was also, this was also, this was also the era where Adam was trying to regain control. So I have a feeling, I have a feeling, Adam may have purposely interviewed Richard Spencer to regain control, to be like, hey, 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 this is my platform, this is my channel. I make the rules here. I can interview whoever I want. You guys work for me. We're not in a partnership. You can suggest, you can maybe give me feedback, but I make the calls here. This is my my company. Because I think he started to feel like they were taking over. Because I have a feeling one day, Adam walked into the office when all these guys were there. They'd all be hanging there, smoking, drinking, having a fun, streaming, making money. Some of them will be bringing their boys on air to make money too. Adam walked in one day and didn't recognize his office. It was full of people he didn't know. He walked into his like own home, basically, like, who are all these guys that have moved in? What the fuck's going on? And he said, okay, no more, no more. That's why he, yeah, that's, that's why he ended up like trying to piss everybody off, making fights, causing beefs and stuff, and then firing everybody. He wanted to regain control. That's, that's, my, that's my big brain theory. Could be wrong, but who knows? Mostly black staff, you feel what I'm saying? This, this no jumper is, is built off of hip-hop you know what i'm saying and before you bring somebody over here bro like nah this your company i ain't telling you what to do but you yeah, gotta you have are. more respect for it. your people man and the people that you would help make this platform better i don't 
Now, Adam wasn't a huge fan of what AD had said on the Wednesday show and also wasn't feeling his performance on the Tuesday show. But instead of just talking to him about exactly. it like a normal boss, exactly. Adam22 decides to trash AD while gossiping with a fellow co-host exactly. Lush, who then leaked their conversation in the No Jumper fan discord that AD was going to be taken off the Tuesday show. Now, obviously AD was pissed since from his perspective, he was getting bashed behind his back by his boss and fans were the ones telling him about decisions that were being made on the show. Exactly. Bro, I don't give a about you keep me on a Tuesday podcast. I care about nigga supposed to be my homeboy. Nigga, if you gonna make a business move, do your business move. Do what you gotta do. Mm. But don't talk behind my back and don't talk to a nigga you just met. Don't have mother sitting there saying that shit. That make me look crazy. Exactly. That make it look like everything. AD, that make it look like everything that I did. And you know, anytime some get bro, cracked, I, I listen, listen, have... listen. Every time some get cracked, yeah. and I think Adam didn't want to understand that. Same with Adam, same, same, same with um Joe Budden. He didn't understand that some people, when you work, when you're a when you're a friend and a manager and a boss, whatever, that friend bit is important too. You have to manage the relationship. That's probably why it's probably not advantageous or probably not a good idea to hire your friends because the lines get blurred. But Adam refused to accept that. Maybe as a friend, talking to Lush about wanting to fire AD isn't the best thing to do as a friend. As a business owner, maybe you can argue and say, I can, I can talk to who I want. I don't agree personally. I think if you're a owner of a company, you shouldn't be talking to the subordinates about other subordinates. That's what you should be talking to other managerial people, right? But you can do what he wants. But as a friend, you, you owed AD a bit more than that. You owed AD a bit more than that. That was slimy. And of course, Lush should, shouldn't have ever shared it. But Adam, you could have fired a guy and just not told, other, it would have been fine. But the way he did it was so disgusting. Yeah. In that office, who the first nigga that go outside and do this shit and ready to ready for whatever? Is it you, Adam? No, I'm asking. Is it you, Adam? I'm asking. Oh, some real shit. What's even worse is Adam's allergic reaction to accountability. Exactly. How can you fault me for trying to have a conversation by, by, with one of the other co-hosts behind the scenes about something? Is me and your relationship like me and his relationship? I like to think that me and you no, are deeper than all these niggas. No, nah, but he's one of the other people who's on the podcast. So I was. See, having that's the problem, though. AD thought he was special. That's what happens when people... I, I've realized that's, that's what happens with people... Maybe it's the same with women in abusive relationships. Maybe they see a track record of a guy being abusive and they think, oh no, I'm special. He won't do it to me. He really loves me. It's like, but he's got a track record of being abusive to all his exes. Why would you think you're different? And this is what happens. Same thing here. He thought he was different. He thought he was special. A conversation with him about it that was supposed to be private... I've been next to you, you know, in life or death situations. Have I not? Yeah, but I don't know what that. I've been right there with like, you, bro. I, I, I've been right there with you, bro. Ready to risk it all. At any given time, anybody had a problem with you, I'm ready to end it all. So the fact I get done like that, that shit weak as but what, done like what? Like I had a conversation with oh, about man. you with Lush. Like I agree. I, I, I don't like the tone of one of the things I said in the conversation. One of the things. Just Adam, the Adam, four, Adam, Adam. For once, for once, Adam, bro. Adam is such a piece of shit. <laughs> I had a problem with one of the things I said. What's what's the what's the big problem here? <laughs> I just spoke about you behind your behind your back, but you could tell AD. AD really loved Adam, man. Adam was his real. Adam was his white boy. You know, black boys have like. Especially those type of hood boys. They always have like one white boy they rock with. Adam was his white boy. That was his friend, man. And he was so disappointed when he found out that Adam doesn't have friends. <laughs> Adam, Adam doesn't do friends. <laughs> he barely does employees. He's barely a good boss. Yo, AD, man. He went out so bad here. Bro, just own that shit, cuz. You did me wrong, bro. Their entire phone conversation could be basically summarized as Adam trying to shift blame for the entire thing, and this comment explains it best. What Adam was really trying to say was, I'm sorry for talking behind your back to the wrong person. I'll do it with someone else who won't snitch on me next time. In Adam's mind, this still wasn't his fault, which is why he decided to fire Lush live in front of thousands of people, producing one of the funniest clips from the show in a while. Lush. Lush. You What's lied up? to me. What? You lied to me, Lush. About what? What I just tried to talk to you about in the hall? Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> nah. Yeah.
Yeah. Nah. One more time. Iconic clip. You lied to me, Lush. About what? What I just tried to talk to you about in the hall? Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. I didn't say nothing. Well, I got conf confirmation from a bunch of different people. Nah, fool. Yeah. yeah. Nah. Yeah. yeah. And it looks funnier. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more time. You lied to me, Lush. About what? Lush, you What's lied that? to me. What? You lied to me, Lush. About what? What I just tried to talk to you about in the hall? Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. I didn't say nothing. Well, I got conf confirmation from a bunch of different people. Nah, fool. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. And it looks funnier the more you lie. I honestly think, at least for now, maybe we could come to the bottom of this at some point, but it's probably better that you just leave. Hey! Uh, thank you. But unfortunately for Adam, the damage had already been done. So AD decided to leave No Jumper permanently, taking T Rail, Duno, and Smack along with him for their own shows, which left multiple holes in No Jumper all at the same time. It's even more interesting that Adam still takes no blame for how things went yeah. down with AD. I told him what the plan was, and he. You know, he's like an ex-addict and he really like needs people to confide in. So he basically goes in the No Jumper Discord and ends up spilling the beans about what was gonna happen with the podcast to random fans, which was just mind blowing. Mind blowing. Why did you speak to him about it, you dickhead? Honestly, he's such a cunt, bro. He's such a cunt. Are the exact words that you could use to describe what he did to his employees in May of Fuck 2024, you know. which ended multiple jobs in the process. As of today, or as of tomorrow. Adam 22 is fu is that one of those dragons on, on House of Dragon, bro? Wait, wait, everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. The news, no jumper news, it's over. The Monday show, the Wednesday show, and the Thursday show also are over. I've decided that I really want to focus No Jumper. But one person who can relate to Adam22 when it comes to beefing with everyone, including your own staff, is Joe Budden. Although there has always been respect from each side to some degree, Joe has always shown a- Joe probably hates Adam like most of us hate a lot of people. We see a lot of ourselves in them, deep down, deep down. So Joe probably sees a reflection of himself in Adam, some of his worst traits, because Joe is a piece of shit too, but he has a lot of good traits. So it kind of puts the piece of shit stuff to the bottom. But Adam 22 doesn't have a lot of good traits. <laughs> so <laughs> he sees, oh shit, this is who I could be if I lent into who I really am. I could be this monster. That's why he probably hates him. A little bit of animosity towards Adam 22. And these days, Bunny can be heard saying Adam 22's no jumper is, quote, in the toilet. No yeah, jumper course. as a whole. It's Podcast just has got toilet. What's happening 100 is really. Uh, He's saving it. While Adam 22 can be heard lashing out on social media, claiming that Joe Budden is not in the big three of media outlets, alongside him, DJ Academics, and DJ Vlad. There's a big three and you're not in it. It's me, Vlad, and that fat mother you were sitting. But where does this beef come from? Well, as you guys may know, Joe Budden is incredibly passionate about hip hop culture. And to him, people like Adam 22 don't really see eye to eye because he believes that he doesn't really love hip hop and is only here to profit off not only the genre, but black trauma in general. Yes. This was especially clear when Adam22 made an appearance on JBP, where Joe would make an interesting point, claiming how No Jumper's content about hip hop is always negative and clickbait. Which one? <laughs> Any of them! <laughs> read, read, read that one right there. Hey, Alex, put the arrow above the one you wanted to read. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah, I interviewed. F yeah, that one. I that interviewed one. FBG Cash, and this is a clip from the interview. F Who that? FBG Cash claims Lil Durk told him to take a photo at King Von's mural. This is a, a, a microcosm of this business and what goes on and how some people look at oh black artists, black lives. Like, come on, Adam, Let you got explain. a bigger responsibility than this, this. as a multi-millionaire from bomb. fucking hip hop. Adam Twenty Two would fire back though claiming that no one he did videos about have claimed it was disrespectful. I know many, <laughs> many guys mom. from O Block, right? I've been there. I know these guys. I interviewed a bunch of them. I fuck them. I fuck the GDs as well. None of them have told me that they think these titles are in any way out of line because to them, it just seems like common sense. If you're going to interview these guys, of course, you're going to talk about the shit that they actually talk about in their Now you music. sound like a label head. 
Along with calling Adam22 disgusted for re-uploading interviews he did with Kevin Samuels after he passed, the pressure was on Adam to really try and prove Joe wrong during this interview. And interestingly, a lot of fans in the comments saluted the way Adam handled the heat from Joe. Completely agreed with Adam. Joe thought he had Adam under pressure, but Adam actually held his ground quite strongly here. However, when Joe Budden and Adam teamed up for the Conversation Lovers Only podcast, Joe had Adam22 cornered when he asked the No Jumper CEO to address some serious allegations against him. For those who don't know, in 2018, a Twitter user by the name of Helen would release a tweet alleging that Adam22 had SA'd her when she was two years below the age of 18 to be exact. The tweet read as follows, Adam22 of No Jumper manipulated me into sexual relationships when I was a girl, R-worded me when I was 19, and then docked me with a revenge porn blog months after he R-worded me, which included topless photos of me as a minor. Now, this story gets really deep. And your boy Luesta is trying to stay on YouTube's good side, if you know what I mean. But if you ever want to read more into it, I suggest you do a few Google searches on your own time. But supposedly, there are dozens of witnesses and screenshots where Adam kinda admits it, but overall, he strongly denied Adam his claim. 16. However, in 2023, another story was brought to the light by P Busters, which I'm not gonna say their full name because, again, YouTube. But they got kicked off the No Jumper podcast after they accused him of talking to a girl who wasn't 18 yet. As reported on Hip Hop DX, the curators of the Instagram account at official P Busters shared a pair of clips of their appearance on No Jumper, in which they addressed Adam22's recent admission that he allegedly had a single phone conversation with a girl who was not the age of 18, but immediately ended the conversation when he realized she was not the age of 18. In his account of events, Adam22 said that he and the woman somehow reconnected when she was 19, at which point they started a sexual relationship. Again guys, I'm sorry, but this clip is a bit too touchy for YouTube. However, you can check out the clip on this YouTube channel. When confronting Adam about it, Joe Budden told Adam that even if this timeline was accurate, the relationship would still technically be inappropriate. You said the girl was from wherever she was from, so she didn't know what she was doing, but you knew what you were doing. You said right. I, knew what I was doing, so I got away from her. Well, right. you, you didn't get away from her if by the grace of God, she ends up back in your life while she's now of age. You're spending the night at her fucking mom's house. What type of white boy pervert shit are you? What are you talking? What, what is the pervert shit about dating somebody once they are legal and of age? I'm gonna let you guys tell me what you think. As a man, by the way, as a man, message to all my men out there, or two things you never want to say in general. Let me see your ID. And what's wrong with dating somebody once they're of age? You don't want to. You don't want to say those things. You don't ever want to say, "Can I see your ID?" <laughs> and you don't ever want to say, "What's the problem with me dating her now she's of age?" That sounds insane, especially when you're a forty-year-old man. That's insane. Think about this altercation in the comments. Obviously, Adam22 is one wicked individual. And although he's loved in the hip hop space for the amazing interactions he's had with rappers and celebrities alike, there is a darker side to his brand that I feel he should address a bit more properly. He's never going to address it. I don't want him to address it. I want him to stay the same. I want him to continue crashing out. And I want it to end in a spectacular way. That's what I want to see. It's never going to end. Don't make it end. Don't encourage low cows to behave well. Just love the fucking show from the outside. Point and laugh. This whole trying to give horrible people on the internet and low cows morality lessons and trying to talk them into being good people, it's a waste of time. 